I have been a casual fan of watching people beat games fast for a long time now, but out of every game I've seen, the Hitman games have always seemed like they had some of the most bafflingly insane speedruns possible. So, when YouTuber Atrioc announced he was running a $1,500 competition to see who could complete his custom contract the fastest in only one week, I knew it would be the perfect time to finally learn how to speedrun Hitman. I'm going to find out if it's possible to use my existing knowledge of Hitman to master the art of speedrunning and get a competitive time in just seven days. At the start of day one, I was already at a massive disadvantage. Most of the challenges I do on this channel involve heavily restricting my item use, so I never bothered to take the time to grind out levels and unlock different items. I knew that for a speedrun, a pistol, some muffins, and a poison would only get me so far, so I dedicated the entire first day to just grinding out different items I thought would be useful. I unlocked tons of cool gear. I got grenades that make people sick, trank darts, tiny explosives, also sorts of useful tools for me to hopefully make good use of. Now that the grinding was done, it was time for day two. So, Hitman 3 has been out for almost three years now, and after doing the math, I deduced that that's actually more than seven days, so needless to say, the other speedrunners had a bit more time to practice than I did. Luckily, that meant all the interesting glitches had already been found for me, so I spent the entirety of the second day researching all the various glitches in the game that are used for speedrunning, and some of these are insane, I mean look at this gameplay right now. But I took the time, I learned all the cool speedrun moves, I learned the ghost step, the stair glide, the fruit boost, and who could forget the chandelier bounce. Also, did I mention only one of those is actually real? I'm trying to trick my brain into thinking I know what I'm doing so that I actually have a chance. It's all about mindset. Now that I had flawless knowledge of every glitch in the game, it was finally time to actually play the contract, which I still had not done. It was on the map known as the Isle of Segal, which takes place on a secluded island with a big castle where a bunch of super rich people are holding a secret party. I have five different targets. This lady playing the harp, this guard shining his shoes, this guard staring at the ocean, this employee standing at a door, and this guy who is in charge of looking at a necklace. If you haven't noticed yet, they are spread out across the entire map, and the only one who ever moves is the guy guarding the necklace. Every single other target is completely stationary. Now, to the untrained player, that might sound like a good thing. If they never move, they should be really predictable, right? Well. I forgot to mention that for this competition, you have to complete the run as a silent assassin. Meaning nobody can see you do something illegal, you can only kill targets, and nobody can realize someone was intentionally killed. In many of the pro runs I watched, a big part of the strategies involved getting their targets to come to them in order to save time. And if these targets don't move, that's going to be a serious roadblock in getting a good time. After studying the targets, I went about the map and reminded myself of its general layout. This is true in every map, but especially for the Isle of Segale, there's tons of railings and gutters for me to climb on, and learning them should hopefully help me move as efficiently as possible throughout the level. Even with this knowledge, things were not looking good on day four. Half the week had gone by and I still hadn't completed a single run of the contract. The panic was starting to set in. After reviewing the spawn locations, I decided my first attempt would be using the art spawn. This was because I could quickly get to the only target that moves and kill him without anyone noticing before continuing on to the rest of the targets. However, this run was far from perfect. Sure, I completed it with the Silent Assassin rating, but with a time of about 8 minutes 30 seconds, it wasn't exactly going to be ranking highly compared to the best runners. For reference, in both of the previous competitions, the winners were able to complete two different five target contracts in under a minute. That's 10 seconds per kill, plus the time to move around the map and escape. And needless to say, I was seriously behind, but all of that was about to change on day five. Day 5 was when I made a huge breakthrough for my speedrun. I realized just how powerful spawning in the keep is. This spawns you atop a private tower overlooking a large section of the map, with three targets immediately in view. This is a great sniper's nest, but the main thing I was worried about was getting out of this spot, as I would have to both get a disguise from a guard and make sure the guard's body doesn't get found, which would cost me quite a bit of time. Now, I'm not certain if this spawn is the best for completing the mission quickly, but what I did 
Florin is that it has the potential to get the stupidest kill imaginable. Apparently, when you toss an item in Hitman, as long as the end point of the arc is on top of somebody, you can lock onto them. This means that the Harp Lady, who is normally out of view from my spawn, can actually be hit with a thrown object from seven stories up. Now, that's already pretty goofy, but she gets seen by two guards in two totally different locations if you throw something lethal at her, so it's pretty useless for a silent assassin run. However, for some reason, if you throw a muffin at her, she will die instantly and her body will fall perfectly in a way that only causes one of the two guards from before to notice her. Not only that, but that guard that sees her just so happens to be right on my way out, so I might be able to use him to get a disguise. Now, quick side note, during this time I had also conceptualized and proved possible a run using a bunch of nerd stuff that was about 10 to 15 seconds faster than this run, but also much harder to pull off. So I had a choice on my hands. Do I spend 15 hours grinding my more optimized run that requires multiple random dice rolls combined with pinpoint pistol shots to pull off, or do I do the funny run? I think we all know the answer. But if you want to see the nerd run, I managed to do all the hard parts after hours of grinding only to fail the easiest step. So so I'll put the unlisted video link to that in the description. After the Muffin Run and I had set our vows and I was fully committed, it was time to start optimizing the hell out of it. I knew I wanted to kill the Harp Lady using a Muffin, and that's great for me, I love that. But there's still, like, hold on, one, two, three, four more targets that I have to take down, and I only get a pistol and one piece of gear to spawn with on the key, plus something I can smuggle somewhere in the level. I tried a lot of different combinations. I thought about shooting at the two guards to lure them over, I thought about setting up propane kills, maybe there's a way I can use the gunpowder or the gargoyle statues I spawn next to to distract somebody. The possibilities were seemingly endless. After a lot of thinking, I decided the best course of action was to take a pistol, the muffins obviously, a silenced sniper rifle, and smuggle lethal poison next to a stairwell inside the main building. Uh, you may also note that I already had every single one of these items before I started any of this, meaning that that day of grinding was completely worthless. Anyways, I figured out my route, and I got it down to what I considered to be a pretty quick time. So, without further ado, I present the fastest time I could get on this challenge while still killing somebody with a muffin. I spawn into the keep and wait a couple of seconds. NPCs still move while cutscenes are happening, but the time I get is based on the in-game timer shown at the top of the screen, so I wait for them to position themselves properly. I immediately pull out my sniper and kill a guard who flies off a cliff, out of sight from everyone else, hiding the body for me. I then shoot two shots at this employee to scare him. While his chimp brain registers that he's currently being shot at and begins to panic, I then shoot a third shot at the guard shining his shoes to distract him. I look back at the guy who now realizes he's in danger and starts running under this cage thing, which I shoot causing it to fall on top of him and kill him. People do see his body, but it counts as an accident kill, meaning I keep my silent assassin rating. Then. I very quickly shoot two gargoyle statues, knocking them both off their perches and sending them crashing to the ground. This will distract the two guards underneath me and get them into position for later. I then immediately take out my muffin and kill the harp lady. With her dead, I take out my sniper rifle and kill the shoe shining guard, whose body falls in a spot where it will never be discovered. Now, that was a lot happening all at once. Four targets are dead in the first 30 seconds. Luckily, the rest of the run is much more relaxed. I use a glitch known as stair gliding, that was the real one, to go down these stairs faster and climb on the gutters to find one of the guards investigating the gargoyle I knocked down earlier. I knock him out with a muffin to get a faster animation and steal his clothes. Usually, there would be another guard to see this, but he's currently marching all the way upstairs to look at the other statue I knocked down, and won't make it back in time before I complete the level. After a bit of running, I reach my final target. I smuggled some poison into the room next to him, and it also happens to be right next to the power grid. I shoot the power grid to shut off the lights and grab the poison. There's only one guard who was watching my target, and with the power grid broken, he's now staring at it right through the wall, allowing me to poison my final target without anyone noticing, which the game actually counts as an accident kill. I then quickly hop out the window and slide down a pipe, before stealing a helicopter to make my escape, completing the contract in just 1 minute and 33 seconds. And now for the question you've all been waiting for. Was this enough to get me at the top of the leaderboards for this competition? 
No, are you kidding me? I got blown out of the water. Don't get me wrong, my time of 1 minute 33 seconds is still a really good time, but it turns out my one day of studying glitches wasn't enough to catch me up on three years of glitch hunting from the community. So other runners were able to cut the time of my run in half. I strongly suggest you go watch the winning runs over on Atriox channel because they were insane. Not only were the winning runs cool, but there were so many creative ideas that got shown off and it never got old to watch all the runs. But despite my failure, I learned that speedrunning Hitman is honestly really fun, so I want to do more with speedrunning in the future. If you have any interesting ideas or runs for me to try out, let me know. But with that said, thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed, please like and subscribe.